been coming down to Arizona. I was bird hunting. It wasn't until about 2011 when I was here full time and I had a three year old bird dog named Hank and him and I just started going out stomping the desert for gambles. My name is Patrick Flanagan. I own and operate Border to Border Outfitters, Upland Field Service Guide, Minnesota, Kansas, Arizona. All wild. It was quick to catch on. You didn't have to go far from the house. Sometimes growing up in Minnesota it was always a two hour drive. And so now all of a sudden, you know, you're just 30 minutes after work and running dogs. Ago, I, I was in selling advertising and, and roofing houses, and then uh, I decided that I wanted to do something that wasn't that. <laughs> I wanted not shave, wear boots, and uh, run dogs, and really just run dogs for other people, you know, not for myself. Hunting's one thing, and. and Hunt for somebody is like a really rewarding career choice, I guess. About five years ago, I was at number five, five dogs. And then I actually ran my first guide season um, with those five dogs. And then, and then you realize real quick that you can't get through a season with five dogs. They were all young and healthy at the time, so it was a successful season and they, they got through it, but I think we added two to three a year now, sitting at 15. You'll never not see a tail wag. And uh, I mean, obviously the reason for 15 is, you know, now the different market, Minnesota, um, you know, the pointers kind of took that over for me. So now I'm like trying to join the setter wagon. Like that's what people want up there. But I remember the first time I got Pearl when she started working for me as a, as my first pointer, it, it was like Christmas hit. And so then Lily, and now I have, you know, two more pointers and and I want them all to, you know, make me happy. And then I gotta do for them so they can, you know, I can't let them down. Girl, your first man's mail, that's you buddy. <laughs> Good job. Good job. Hank finds birds. Well, what we've been through together, you know, is like your best comrade. And he's he's been through it all in, you know, nine states. That's basically, I plan on, I want to keep them all from start to finish, whether I got to build a graveyard for dogs or not. I, I hold that part dear to me because uh, these are my guys and I'd hate to let them down or pawn them off or something to somebody else. So yeah, I'm gonna keep them till they can't hunt no more and then I'm gonna baby them till they're gone. Till the end of March, it's pretty much time off for the dogs that are real savvy. But you know, there's you got 15, there's I got five of them that ain't. Honestly, it doesn't really stop until June. You know, our, the dog's real rest is June, July, August, and then September 1st, it's game time again. So I guide in uh, Minnesota, Kansas, and Arizona. Because, I mean, I did, High school, the Navy, got out of the Navy, tried college. And then I took this insurance job out West Kansas and, and everybody's like, hey man, it's pheasant season, let's go. And so I was like, hold on, I gotta go buy a puppy. <laughs> and Hank's first year, you know, 2008, I was running them on a check cord because you know, everybody else was running their labs and I didn't want them screwing things up. And they're like, take that cord off. And he was pointing birds at four months. And I think he had, you know, 
by the time he was seven months, he had already a season under his belt that was pretty solid. And so that's kind of how, you know, Arizona came to be, was just work related. And then it took me three years to decide I didn't want to sell an advertising with four dogs in the back truck of 100 degrees out. And all I wanted to do was hunt anyways. So finally I had enough of it. If I could just stay healthy and stay doing it, that's the best goal. You know, obviously pay the bills, but you know, if there's if there's any one goal, it's just to always get better. Better dogs, maybe a few more bucks in the pocket. Here's how you live outside, you know, and here's how you do it. Because there's no retreat, you know, no matter what the weather comes at you. Like, man, I wish I could just go inside and get comfortable, but you don't have that choice. And so that lasted like two years, eight months before it was all said and done. It, it really was that. I didn't, uh, I didn't do anything else but, you know, a couple hotels, some buddies' couches and stuff, but like, it was really outside. It wasn't a permanent choice. The lease was up, it's just as I grew dogs. So I heard about Montana was a place where everybody went to go make better dogs. So did that, headed there, ended up, you know, North Dakota was good and trying to figure out, you know, what rules not to break, you know. So everywhere I went, I started, you know, Onyx put me on land. I would have never found that on a map, you know? Point being, every time I tried to rent a place for like maybe three months or something, as soon as I told them I had five or six dogs, it was like, mm, nah, <laughs> keep your tent. <laughs> so I just gave up after a while, I was like, screw it. But I was lifting weights every day, and I mean, I was running, um, training. I wasn't like some transient. I mean, I'd go to like community colleges or pay a day pass at the Y, get showers and stuff that way. But it went bad. But it was hard. My whole thing was handling. Like, can I get this dog to handle? And if I can get a dog to handle, then I can put it in front of birds, and then I'm golden. And so that was the thing. There's a landscape in every place that I put that tent up that wasn't boring at all. Because nothing was ever boring. <laughs> 